now from the Juniper Networks booth. Mike, fantastic to join you again. It's great to be here. What a fantastic atmosphere. We can't stop people coming I behind know, the us, buzz, can we? The I buzz. Know. Amazing, amazing. And what I've loved to see is the fact that sustainability, I think really drawing on last year was a key topic, but yeah. now this embedding by design has got a whole new resonance. And I'd love to talk what you're doing about kind of embedding from the network and architecture up. It's absolutely the way forward. Can you tell us more about that? I think it's fantastic development. Absolutely, you're absolutely right. Sustainability is probably the theme of this event. Yes. Uh, and certainly something that Juniper is extremely focused on. Um, I guess like, the first thing I'd say is we started with ourselves. So last year we made a pledge to be carbon neutral by 2025 yes. for our own operations. That is necessary, but not sufficient, but we at least wanted to do what we could do to be a good corporate citizen. Um, but it, as, as it relates to our products, we kind of think about it in three different buckets. Yes. We think about it first with the network building blocks. So the, each, each of the individual network elements, how power efficient can it be? Um, we engineer our own silicon. We've seen from you know, first generation to current generation, 70 to 95% reduction in watts per gig. So really strong progress, but again, more, more is needed. Well, it starts with the, with the actual network element itself. Then it's about how you actually build the network and how you architect the network. And actually, we um, had a number of our distinguished engineers put together uh, a book, um, which Absolutely. is on our website. Yeah. Um, we'll share that with everybody, um, which basically goes through best practices in designing exactly. data centers, um, wireless networks, um, you know, thinking about security, building your lab. So it's it's about Juniper, but it also can be applied to any network because um, we really feel like how you build the network is important. And, and then really our third pillar is how you operate the network. Absolutely. So that's where things like automation, AI come in, thinking yes. about how you can operate the network much more efficiently, Absolutely. how you can get so much data to basically tune your network resources so you're only using what you need for the given job and for the, for the user. So I think we look at like the energy crisis globally as well, particularly in EMEA. I think there's a whole new resonance as well about like bringing together you know energy resilience and security and that consumption, that active intelligence to do that, the shared value that brings. I think it's consciousness for everybody at the moment, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Our, our customers here in EMEA are by far the most forward-looking yes. and, and are challenging us to, to kind of Absolutely. partner with them on, on meeting their climate goals. Indeed. Yeah. It really is. I think that's the whole role of telecoms in particular. It's like the hub of the world for catalysts of impact in so many verticals, for isn't sure. it? Absolutely. Yeah. In terms of your customers, in terms of tech solutions, let's share a little bit about some of the innovation. I, I spoke about Cloud Metro very recently. Great yes. example yes. there. Perhaps we'll start with that one. Cloud Metro, absolutely. We're talking a lot about that yes. uh, at this mm -hmm. event. And really, you know, when we thought about a Cloud Metro solution, we looked at the Metro network and exactly. 5G is basically causing a re-architecture of the Metro network. Um, and most of the design principles from the past are no longer going to work for us in the future. And we design sustainability from the ground up with that solution. So a few things. It's Cloud Metro because everything's connected to the cloud. So what we can do to manage that network is much more efficient um, and manage those resources much more efficient to turn up those network resources to manage them ongoing, like I was saying. Um, we've actually built the infrastructure products themselves to have a much longer life span. Fantastic. You know, four to seven years longer than yes. most of the ones that are out there. So, you know, e-waste is diminished. The longer you can use it, obviously the more beneficial that it is. So Cloud Metro is really um, a key product for us that um, is just getting off the ground. We launched it late last year, uh, but we're super excited about it. The other thing I, I'd, I'd add is our RAN Intelligent Controller. Yes. Um, yes. A lot of buzz about, uh, about RIC and Open RAN. Absolutely. And so um, that's something that we believe is very differentiated. In fact, we just made an announcement a couple days ago about um, working with Vodafone on this. Yes. And there are yes. some really cool applications around kind of radio resource management as well as congestion management. And if you think about that from a sustainability perspective, it's all about, again, minimizing the network resources that are required to give the end user what they need. Um, and there, there's so much waste inherent in how we used to manage networks, and things like our RIC can help you kind of address that. I love that. I think with the RIC in particular, another theme I think that's carried on from last year, the power of the ecosystem. So you mentioned their Vodafone, there was the MOU with IBM a few IBM, days ago as well. Yeah. And it really is the power of the collective to scale change in this area, isn't it? Yeah.